they had the hard job of going between a sociopath and a psychopath. Which one do you believe more? So the one that gave up more evidence is the one that they tended to believe more. I, in my heart, will always believe both of them were truly involved. And the one that said he stood by and watched had more involvement than anything. Much more than what he says he did. And the things that they did to Trey was unthinkable. Especially for the kind of kid that he was. Would never hurt anybody, do anything in the world for you. He come home many times without clothes on because he ran into a buddy that needed a shirt, so he gave me a shirt. He'd run into somebody that, you know, their pants got torn, so he'd give me shorts. You know, he'd come home half-dressed because, oh, well, Mama ran into somebody and they needed this, so I gave it to him. That that was just the kind of, the kind of person he was. He would help anybody at any time do anything. And... He happened to come across these two and was in the wrong place at the wrong time with them. Today's episode is just a little bit different from what I'm usually putting out. It isn't as much about a drug user in the video as it is what drug users did to this lady's son. Um, having your child taken from you at such a young age and never being able to see him again has to be one of the worst things a person could ever go through. I cannot even imagine what that's like. So today we speak with Jennifer Brinklow. Um, her son was taken from her by a couple of drug addict gang members. And when they were sentenced to jail, um, I don't think they got necessarily what they deserved and neither does she. Um, so this is a very interesting episode. It's definitely one of the first ones that hit me in my field box the way it does. I just, I couldn't keep it together, man. I did the best I could, but um, Jennifer tells a complete story about what happened to her son. And this is such a horrible, horrible thing, man. And this woman's strength is right there. And her beauty is right there for you to see. She's still trying to keep it together, even though she goes through it every day. I'm so glad she came in to talk to me, man. Um, I hope you enjoy this episode, man. If you're new here, don't, you know, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. All those things really help this little channel. Helps me to get some of these stories out here. I really enjoy these podcasts and I hope you do too. So, uh, strap in for this episode of chopping it up okay so jennifer we are here with jennifer and she has got a crazy story to tell us today about her son um i feel like this is going to be uh an emotional podcast this time it's a little bit different from the drug things and stuff that we do but it is also about our area and people that have been done wrong or had crazy things happen to them man and i feel like your story defines that right yeah definitely <laughs> Um, so introduce yourself to us and, and tell us why you wanted to come on today. Um, I'm Jennifer Brinklow. My son's Tristan Brinklow. Um, he was murdered four years ago in Warren County. And it's been a very eye-opening and disappointing trip through the justice system. Um, it's it been a nightmare to go through. You see um, a lot of things that you never thought were true you were raised with and you thought were right through the justice system and you find a lot of red tape that they go through and things that you never thought were true that actually are true to go through. So it's, it, it's definitely been a nightmare to go through. Hmm. So yeah. basically saying you grew up with a set of beliefs that the police would protect you. They would take care of you. If something went wrong, they would fix the injustice and they haven't done that. Um, I, I won't say so much the police themselves, but the system itself. Okay. Um, a lot of laws and things. Um, I will say, I, I will give credit to those that did their jobs that um, went over and beyond what they needed to do with, with in the case. But through the court system, um, I don't know if it was all through the court system itself or if it had partially to do with COVID, maybe, because um, our whole case went through COVID. So it just mm. feels like we got rushed through. Like, it wasn't, it was just another case. A lot of times, not an actual member of the community. Right. You know, um, it, he's a, still a kid, and he got taken. And it did not need to happen. Um, there was a lot of things that they should have, the two that ha did this should have already been in jail. They never should have been out on the streets. Okay, so let's rewind. Let's rewind back to what happened. Let's let's start from the beginning. Like what year? What happens? Like take me take me to the okay. Um, twenty nineteen. Um, my son's turning twenty. He's nineteen, turning twenty. Um, the end of September. Great kid. He 
contacts me all the time. He's hanging out with friends, you know, things like that. He never goes times without talking to me. Um, take him out to dinner for his birthday. Three days later, um, I hear from him in the afternoon. Um, we get a very short video clip from him that evening, and that's the last we hear from him. What birthday was this? Um, his 20th birthday. Okay. He turned 20 um, four days prior to this. Um, he People said that they kept seeing him, and I would believe him, but he hadn't contacted me, and that's not... That's definitely not my child. He was always, within a couple of days, he would always, always message me. Um, if he didn't come out of the house or if he wasn't home, he definitely went, hey, mom, I'm staying here. I'm here, you know. I, I would just get a, a quick, love you, mom. You know, you know, I'm okay. I love you. You know, talk to you later. You know, something like that. Just to let me know he's okay. Um, and I hadn't gotten that. And I knew mom's gut feeling intuition you know it's something's wrong um and everybody kept saying oh no he's just he's upset he's in a mood he's he'll he'll contact you I'm like no he might do that with buddies he might do that with friends he might do the people he don't do that to me he never does it to me um i just like got how, a job how many days went by before you really started wondering um within a week because like i say it's it's a few days and you know i always hear from him every few days or so so, you know, a week or so, I'm like, you know, something's not right. Okay. Um, and then as I started asking his friends, hey, have you talked to Trey? Have you, you know, seen him? You know, what's going on? No, I haven't talked to him. He was upset last time I saw him. I'm like, okay, he always talks to me. So, you know, this this is sitting in right. A um, little bit of time goes by. Oh, we saw Trey. You know, he was in a car. You know, he was in a car with, with some friends. You know, he's fine. Who's okay. telling you that he was, who's, who's saying these things? Um, random people through town that know him. Okay. Um, everybody in Front Royal, everybody in Front Royal knows him. Um, he would walk everywhere. He was on his bike. He would go into different businesses all over the town just to say, hey. Mm -hmm. He'd know the owners. He'd know people that worked there. And he was always in and out of places. Um, different people that, that knew him would, would contact me and, you know, hey, mom, it's it's good. He's, he's fine. After he's missing, you know, huh? After he's Weird. missing. I wonder, like... They obviously didn't see him. They thought they seen something um, of him. Or? I found out later there's another boy in town that oh. resembles my son. Hmm. Um, and I guess they were seeing him hmm. thinking it was Trey. Right. So, so they're giving you confirmation based on not real confirmation. Right. 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 Which at a quick glance, if they look so similar, I can kind of see that. Right. Okay. Um, I had somebody contact me real late one night. Um tell me that he's in West Virginia. He's moving away. He's changing his name. He never wants to contact me again. Never wants to contact anybody in town again. And I'm like, no, this isn't right. Mm -mm. No, some, so something's not right. He always contacts me. They're giving me information supposedly from a friend of, a friend of theirs that this is what's going on. And I'm like, no, something's not right with us. Um, so this is October at this point. This is like maybe mid-October. So it's been, you know, a couple weeks. I'm like, no, he always contacts me. If you don't talk to anybody else, he always contacts me. He comes by, sees me, you know, always. So that was a huge red flag right there going, hmm, something's definitely not right. And we continue to go through this. Um... Still don't hear from him. I message him like every day, you know, just contact me. Give me a, a thumbs up. Give me something. Let me know you're okay. Never heard from him. Of course, at this point, I had no knowledge of anything that had happened anyway. Um, we go through November. Thanksgiving comes. That's one of his favorite things. He loves to eat. So, you know, I thought for sure we'd hear from him. That never heard from him. Um... December 2nd rolls around and there was a um, place that, uh, out at Diggs Landing in Front Royal. I don't okay, know. So let, me, let me stop you real quick before we get to that. Um, during this two months that he's missing, mm -hmm. are you in contact with the police? Are you searching for him actively? Um, looking for him through friends. 
I didn't stress a whole lot with the police, only because he was 19, um, had just broken up with a girlfriend, was trying to stretch his wings, trying to be independent, be right. on his own. Okay. Being a young man, you know, You're trying to respect trying to his do boundaries. his thing. Exactly. Trying trying to I respect that. Hardest thing in the world for a parent and a mom to do is let your babies go up, grow up and go out on their mm -hmm. own. I was trying very, very hard to do that. So hadn't really pressed the issue with the police and I still had people saying, Oh yeah, we talked to him, we saw him, you know, this and that. Not realizing right, so, it wasn't him. Right. So those little things right there, like sprinkling hope into the exactly. fact that he's still there. Exactly. Uh, keeping you going. So, yeah, my birthday comes and goes. He never said anything, which is not like him. Then, like I said, Thanksgiving comes and goes. One of his favorite holidays, nothing. And then two weeks later, December 2nd rolls around. Okay. Um, kids go out to Diggs Landing. Anybody in Front Royals kind of familiar with Diggs Landing. Um, it's not too, too far from the high school and they go out and hang out, things like that. Um, a couple of kids had gone out and they saw something that was kind of odd and they went over to investigate it. Um, happened to be a refrigerator that was covered with vegetation, um, that was placed vegetation. It wasn't, it hadn't grown. It was just placed vegetation, um, attempting to hide this and, they called the police, thinking that was really odd. I guess they, I don't know if they opened it up, if they just called the police, whatever. Right. Um, police came out and actually found him. Um, at the time, we did not know it was him. Uh, in the process of them finding him, I had made my mind up, this is long enough, I, I can't do this anymore, I'm calling the police. I I've got to make a missing person's report. Something's going on and this is this is not right. I just need confirmation that he's okay. Right. Regardless of his boundaries at this point, he should have contacted exactly. me. Exactly. And now I need to know you're okay. Right. Okay, gotcha. And um, my boyfriend had actually gone to work. When I when he came home, I was like, we're going to the cops. We're going to go talk to the cops. Um, I need to know he's okay. I can't do this anymore. I'm losing sleep. I'm stressed. I'm worried about him. This is just not normal for him. Mm -hmm. In the process of him going to work, the police came by to see me. Um, somebody else, um, within a couple of days before that, had made a missing persons report on him. One of his friends did. Okay. I didn't know this. So they came, and they were talking to me and asked me exactly what you did. Why didn't I contact them sooner? And I told them the same thing. He was 19, turning 20. Oh, you're being a mother. Being out on his own, trying to let him stretch his wings. You know, yes, it's very hard for a mom to do, but... She's trying very, very hard to do that. Eventually, we all got to do that. They understood that. They were like, okay. And it was two male cops, so they were like, okay, that makes sense. You know, I said, not to mention, I've had people tell me they've seen him. So, you know. Right. I, um, I, yeah, that right there yeah. is like, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. tough. That's a hard hey, part We just saw right him down, at, down by Martin's on the right, sidewalk. Right, because you know? I feel like you're getting to a certain point right there where you're like, you're starting to worry, <laughs> and then you get someone that says, hey, it's okay. Now you're good again. <laughs> thinking he should contact me at any time, that up yeah. and down roller coaster right there had to be hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, trying to go to work every day, trying to worry about him and wondering, okay, is he going to contact me today? You know, still sending a message all the time. You know, hey, just give me a thumbs up, give me something, let me know you're okay. Still not getting anything. And when they came and talked to me, they said, well, we're just going to do a DNA swab of your, your cheek and all. And I thought, you know, they say, well, it's just routine for missing person report. We're just going to do this. Personally, I thought that was a little odd, but I didn't know they had just found the body either. So they did this, and this was on the 3rd or 4th. Um, by the 13th, they came back to me. Uh, I'll never forget it. It was 8.30 in the morning. I was just getting up to get to work. I had a knock on the door. Um, there was two cops standing outside. I had just called them on Wednesday. This was a Friday. I had just called them to see any updates on the on the case since I had reported him. Um, so I never gave it a second thought whatsoever. I just thought they were coming by to give me an update on the on the case. 
Um, maybe they had found something, you know, maybe they found him, gave him a message. Mm -hmm. That's all I was thinking. Um, I so got to get up. the fact that he's not alive anymore never crosses your mind? At this point, no. Like the hope, no. the hope of a mother is just keeping you going. You're not going to admit yeah. that. I, 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 it never crossed my mind. It's not something that knowing him never crossed my mind. He was a jokester sometimes too, right? Yeah, he joked around. He was always smiling, always smiling. Um, anybody that knew him, he's the first one to go in. He, the, it's the first one he would call. You know, anybody would call if they had a problem. They would go to him. He'd be there to listen to him. He gave the best hugs. You know, he just comforting, very comforting. So, never, never crossed my mind. I look back now and think. You know, how dumb was I not to realize when I've got two cops sitting in front of me that early in the morning, it never crossed my mind. Hmm. Never once crossed my mind. Um, they would ask if I was alone, and I said, yeah, I'm get, getting ready to go to work. You know, what, what's going on with the case? You're, you're alone. There's nobody else here. It was me and my dog, <laughs> you know. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ready to go to work. You know, what's what's going on? So they asked if they could come in, and of course I told them yeah, thinking they were just going to come in and talk to me. And they gave me confirmation that they had found him. And after that, um, it took a minute because I, I just kind of looked at them, like, you know, what did you just say? And then all of a sudden it hit me. It registered what they said to me. And I was like, no, this can't be real. This can't be real. Um, I've got steps that are right inside my front door. And I remember collapsing on my steps. And after that, the whole rest of the day is so fuzzy that it seemed like months went by in that day. I never once thought I would get that, that kind of answer back for not seeing him. Just not something I would have ever thought. Not in Front Royal, not in Warren County. It's, you know, it's a hometown. That's where you grew up. You know, everything is safe. And I never thought ever that would happen. Man, man, that has to be tough, man. I'm so sorry for that. I can't imagine. Yeah. Um, the outpouring of people that found out. Um, the police gave me the weekend to contact family to let them know. Um, they said they would make a press release on Monday. This was Friday. And um, it took the whole day of Friday to just sink in. It, it And it still didn't sink in. It was just still so unbelievable. Um, and all weekend I was making phone calls and it, I would say it and I still wouldn't believe it. I was still in denial, I guess. Um, it was absolutely the worst nightmare I could have ever imagined. It, it's anybody that's a parent that cares about your kids would feel the same way. Um, it, it's, I think <laughs> like I say, my, my pillow here that's got his face on it. You, know, it's, you can see there's smiling faces on here. That's That's all he ever did. And all that was just gone. Um, I, I just, I, I, I went through motions for months, and that's all I could do. I, I, my boyfriend actually like, kind of pointed me the direction. Okay, we've got to go eat now. You know, he was like, okay, let's go, and I, I was just numb, completely numb. It's surreal, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you just can't wrap your head around it. No. Um, fortunately, um, I did get put in contact with a court advocate. Um, her name's Kelly Ann, and she's been amazing through everything. I'm still in touch with her, even though court's over. Um, I'm still in touch with her. She stays in touch with me, and she's been amazing. Um, uh, got an aunt that had come down from Hagerstown 
Marilyn, and she was a rock to me as well. She came down for every single meeting I had, every court appearance, everything. Um, I don't know how I made it through without her. Um, I actually went to stay with her for about two months right after it all happened just to get away. It felt like every time I go in town somewhere, people were looking at me. It's like, oh, there she is. Like, we don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying everybody was. They probably weren't. But it felt Elf like that every eye was on me every time I went outside. And it just, I, I needed to get away. So I got to go stay with her for a while. And I can't thank her and my uncle enough for, you know, let me go up there for all that. But um, coming back to town, it was, it's very hard. Um, there's still parts of town that I have a hard time going through. You know, I can't go to the side of town that it actually happened at without having a panic attack. Um, at first, it was really bad. I'm a little better with it now. Um, I can go to that side, but I still get a little anxious. Um, going out 619, because that's how you go out to um, Diggs Landing, I have a very, very hard time going out that way still. Um, it just doesn't happen very often. For obvious reasons. You um, said you did visit the site one time, though? One time I did go out. Why, um, why do you think you did that? Why do you think you needed closure there? Or? I needed to know where he was. Um, there was several of his friends that wanted to go out. Um, they wanted me to go with them. Um, all his friends would come to the house, and my, I'm mom to all of them. And still, to this day, they still call me mom. But um, they wanted me to go out with them just maybe to have some closure maybe mm -hmm. um for, ju for just to see where he was um i just i can't do it anymore i can't go back out there anymore so um, i guess my next question would be do you think that helped um a yes and no maybe a little um like i say it's it felt like it took us forever to go out there it probably didn't but it felt like it mm -hmm. um Knowing I was going to go to the last place my child was, was crazy. Um, I actually didn't go all the way down to where it was, where he was. Um, I kind of stayed back a little bit. Yeah, you're scared, um, man. You're supposed yeah. to be. That's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have some pretty amazing people that have actually been involved with the whole case. Um, I had them tell me that there's pictures that were taken, of course, of crime scene. Um, they never want me to see it, ever. No, no. Um, they don't want that to be my last thought of him. But a mom's brain does some pretty crazy things. Yeah, well, you still have an imagination, right? Yeah. And I don't know which is worse, seeing pictures or not seeing pictures hmm. and wondering. And let your mind wonder. That's, that's really, really hard. Um, there's nights I don't sleep because my mom wanders and I can't turn it off. Um, and then there's other times all I do is, all I want to do is sleep just because, um, so it's kind of a roller coaster with all that too. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so, but, um, going through court, it was definitely eye opening. A lot of red tape, a lot of different things like that. Okay. Um. So one second, I sure. want to double check to make sure everything's working. Okay, perfect. Everything's working perfect. Awesome. So awesome. court, man, I feel like this is where, uh, <laughs> because just a little bit that I read online, I feel like this was what happened in the end is really wrong if, if these people were yeah. the culprits. Yeah. Um, the two of them, I did take some notes to keep Absolutely, me Absolutely, whatever you need. Um, the two of them, I... I I don't want to make them famous by any means. No, it's, you don't even have to say their names not if you about don't them. want to. It's not about um, them at all. It's the fact that if they didn't get what they deserve for what yeah. they did, that's what we're pointing out. Yeah. Um, and they didn't. They, they really didn't. Um, they had extensive rap sheets. Both of them had extensive rap sheets. One of them um, is affiliated with two different gangs. Um, one of them's got so many drug charges and different things. Um, and actually, the, the second one, um, he had, ironically enough, on my son's birthday, had kidnapped a girlfriend, 
with the help of his mother, um, kidnapped a girlfriend, had strangulation charges, assault battery charges, um, kidnapping charges, all this with us. He was actually on the run and had met my son that Saturday. Wow. Um, during this whole time, from that Wednesday to Saturday, he um, was doing meth, and a lot of the court case, they said he was so methed out that he didn't know what he was doing. He was on the run, and this and that. Um, the two guys, both of them were on meth, but um, the one had been on a meth trip, they said, for the four days. Um, a lot of it, they said, they, they basically blamed on, on him doing meth. And things that came out during court, things that they prepped me for for court, I'll never believe that he was so out of it he didn't know what he was doing. There was too many changes in their stories and things like that that happened. Um, it was everything from they were hanging out at one point to he thought he was a narc to he thought he knew where his mom was. She had been arrested because of helping him kidnap his girlfriend um, to he was wearing his clothes. So it things like that changed throughout the evening so much that it I'll never believe that he didn't know what he was doing. Um, they were in the one guy's apartment, and the one guy that had the, the a gang affiliations. They were at his apartment actually is where it happened. Um, and between the two of them, I just I'll never believe some of the things that I was told through court um, that they were out of it to not know what they were doing. Drugs isn't an excuse, though. No. Like, I, no. Could, I, I did a lot of crimes in my life, and they were all on drugs. And that was never an excuse I was allowed to use in court. And that's basically what it feels like, that they were giving them an excuse they were on drugs. Okay. Um, For one, um, like I said, they had extensive rap sheets. They never should have been walking the streets. Um, we were told during that by one of the investigators that they should, never should have been walking the streets. They kept slipping through the cracks. So the justice system failed. They are number one. They let them out. They kept getting out for whatever reason. I don't know the reasons for all that. You know, we didn't get into all that at all. Um, but they kept getting out and going from there. So they were on the streets and they shouldn't have been. Um, after they had, had hid Trey, um, the one had just gotten arrested hours after that. Um, the cops did find him. The other one went on and lived his life like nothing happened. Went on, did his own thing, whatever. Um, the end of November, he actually shot somebody, wounded him, did not kill him, but wounded him. Um, and he still went on and lived his life. A couple weeks later, he got arrested for a DUI in Winchester because he was wanted for that shooting. So that's the only reason he got arrested at the time. So when they do figure out that that your son had something that they they all was all involved together. Like what happens then do they come and tell you this? Like um how does the investigative team come to you and tell you that they've caught the the murderers? Um that was kind of crazy actually. Um the one guy that had been in jail since September um started talking to a cellmate about a murder, how do you get off on murder charges, how this, how that. Um, ironically enough, we found out that it was a gang member that he was in his cell with him. Um, he actually went to the COs and wanted to be recorded. He's like, hey, this guy's talking about a murder and, you know, you know, go from here. So they got information like that. They said they had hours and hours of, of him talking and he said, you're going to have to tell me exactly, you know, what you did uh, for me to give you any information, you know. John, he was being his buddy and all this, and he told him everything. He told him everything. They said they had hours of, of tape from where they wired him. Wow, well, he was just sitting there bragging. It was Yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm curious if it was braggadocious yeah. or if it was, here's what happened, how do I get off? Because I feel like that's what two guys in a cell would have been going yeah. over. Um, the way I took it, he was asking, how can he get off on charges, is how I took it. Um, I don't, I didn't take it at the time that he was bragging, per se. Mm -hmm. 
um, I think it was just more curious of, you know, right. how do I get out of this? Right. Type That's thing. what guys in a jail cell would do for sure. I've been in that situation. I've so, been asked those questions, and right. I have probably asked those questions. So it starts out with a jailhouse snitch, huh? So I guess in these tapes, he's is he giving up the other guy as well? Do you know that? He was talking about two of them did this, two of them that. Um, one's trying to blame the other. Once the other got arrested, um, it was, no, he did this. No, he did this. Uh. So it was both of them trying to put it on the other one pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um we so did. they're telling on each other left they're like Pretty much. whatever one can tell knows they're gonna get Pretty off much. the quickest. And then how yeah. how does their sentencing and everything end up? Um that that's the disappointing part. Okay. Um from day one, I told the Commonwealth I did not want a plea deal. At all. I wanted to go to court. This is from the bottom of my gut, I don't want a plea deal. And they're like, It's gonna be hard to go through court. I'm like, I don't care. This is for my child. To get justice for him, I don't want to plead deal. And they, they let you know that you can lose at trial, though, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I thought it was going to be under first-degree murder. It They said they knew they had enough evidence to get them definitely for second degree. Okay. I'm like, okay. So that, I mean, that kind of makes sense. If they can do that um, later, later on in the, the trial and things like that, it can change. It could go up to first, whatever. Um, right, well, that depends on intent. Right, um, and things like that. They said they didn't feel like they intended to do it. It was one of those in-the-moment things that mm -hmm. happened. That's what makes it second. Right, so they went from there. Um, they had kidnapping by force. They had defiling a body, um, and there was another basically defiling a body um, I'm not exactly sure how the wording was different, mm -hmm. but they had two charges with that. You found about to cover evidence, I would think. And um, second degree murder. So the one, um, well, let me, let me back up. Um, there were things that were missing. I asked literally about his class ring from day one when they found him. I want to know if his ring was with him. Um, they couldn't, for a long time, they couldn't tell me that they didn't have it which I understand the investigation was going on, things like that. Um, I told them all I want, I want his class ring. I want his ring. And after about six months or so, one of them said, well, I'll give, I can lead you to where some evidence is. I, I can lead you here. So pouring down rain one night, horrible storms, the, in, the lead investigator went and took him at his word, that he would show them where evidence was. They found two or three trash bags of stuff that was in the room, um, sheets, clothes, um, backpack, all kinds of stuff that they had. Um, they knew to clean up the room, so they were hiding evidence. Um, I think it was the last bag that they found. Um, when they found it, his ring was in it. Um, my court advocate, um, couldn't tell me a whole lot, but she did call me um, when they knew they had this ring because she knew that's all I wanted. Um, she told me that I couldn't have it right away because of court and things mm -hmm. like that. It was part of evidence. Mm -hmm. But they did have it. It was safe that I would eventually get it back. So that was a very bittersweet moment knowing that um, I would eventually get part of what he always had on him back. Um I knew it was going to be a long trip until I could get it back, but at least I would get it back. Um, so because he led him to evidence, um, the one for my son basically got 10 years with five years suspended on that. And with that, he got um, he had other charges, too. So basically, he's serving a 10-year sentence, and he has, I think, 20 years hanging over his head with that. The other one... <laughs> this is where it failed us. I mean, that it already failed you. Yeah. Five years is a failure. Yeah. Like, they found evidence. There's no doubt these people did this. He took him to evidence, and it was in his apartment. Okay. So, I was raised my entire life. If you were in there at the scene of a crime, you were just as guilty as the one that actually did it. By all means, hands down. You were there, you did it. I mean, you're guilty by association. Yeah, and if you don't tell, if you don't... Yeah. Exactly. 
I've been in the criminal world. It's such a hard situation to even thinking about being in. But, man, you're talking about a life. You know, whether it's an overdose person or whatever the hell they did here, um, that you yeah. have an obligation to the world. You know, uh, yes, yeah, it's just terrible. It's terrible. And, and <laughs> like, so what else did he get? I, he got as much time for petty crimes as he got for your son's life. He probably got more time for drug charges than he did for trade. That's pathetic. Yeah. That is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah. Um, and also, that was a plea deal. They, um, that you never wanted from the start. Right. Okay. Right. I, I told him, hands down, absolutely no, I don't want a plea deal. From the day they said we were going to have to go to trial, I said, I don't want a plea deal. I, I do not want a plea deal. That's all I would tell them. They gave him a plea deal. And then, well, then they told me, if we do a plea deal, I said that I don't want. If we do a plea deal, we will run it by you first before we even attempt to offer it to them. What they did was give them the plea deal and then called me in for a meeting to tell me what was on the table for them. Mm -hmm. Which was so frustrating and very infuriating because I told them I didn't want that to begin with. And then you're going to tell me you're going to run it by me first, but you did just the opposite of that. So they put it on the table, let them know that's how he got the 10 years. And they said um, they wanted to guarantee that they could get the other one charged with the murder um, because he led him to evidence and things like that. So that's why they offered him what they offered him. So this is a guy that led him to the evidence that kind of cooperated with the police too much. They gave him 10 years to spend five of it. Mm -hmm. He's doing five years in. And then the guy he told on, let's move to him. He got charged with things over a 96-hour, four-day period that he did. All the charges he had for his girlfriend, all the drug charges over that period, and everything he did with my son got clumped together in this. He got a total of 28 years and nine months over a four-day crime period. Two major things. He had six counts of strangulation against a girlfriend. Just that alone should have been, to me, more than that. Not to mention the kidnapping of her and everything he did to this poor lady. I want to take nothing away from her either because God bless her um, for surviving everything that he did to her, which I don't even know all the details to that. I don't want to know the details to that. Um, but what I do know, God bless her. Well, you're painting a picture of a violent individual. Actually, very uh, uh, violent, yeah. uncon uncaring person that hurts men, women, and children. Yeah. Without remorse. Um, then he went on this crime spree, running from the cops, trying to hide out, doing more mouth, going through that. And he meets my son that afternoon. And within eight hours later, my son's gone. Um, we did find out things from through the, the trial process. Um, some things that he did to his girlfriend coincided with things that he did to Trey. Um, we found out there's the bone that's in your throat. Both of them were broken. Um, there was other things that they were never released to the to the public in the newspapers that the one that led them to the evidence um, had told the police. And there's no way he could have known that had that happened with his girlfriend. So that's why they pinned it more on the other guy than the one that took him to the evidence. Um, they had the hard job of going between a sociopath and a psychopath. Which one do you believe more? So the one that gave up more evidence is the one that they tended to believe more. Even though... I, in my heart, will always believe both of them were truly involved. And the one that said he stood by and watched had more involvement than anything. Um, more, Much more than what he says he did. Um, but the other one is the one that he said did the majority of it. And the things that they did to Trey was unthinkable. Especially for the kind of kid that he was. Um. 
would never hurt anybody, do anything in the world for you. He um, come home many times without clothes on because he ran into a buddy that needed a shirt, so he gave me a shirt. He run into somebody that, you know, their pants got torn, so he gave me shorts. You know, he'd come home half-dressed because, oh, well, Mama ran into somebody and they needed this, so I gave it to him. You know, um, that that was just the kind, of, the kind of person he was. He would help anybody at any time do anything. And he happened to come across these two and was in the wrong place at the wrong time with them. So... So the guy got 28 years. Is that what he has to serve or was any of um, that suspended? The way I understood it, that he is going to serve that. Um, he was 37 when it happened. So he'll be just under 70 before he can get out. Um, he had something suspended too. Um, so he's got like another 25 years over his head as well. Um, that's still not a reassurance yeah, he'll, he'll to us. He'll still never get out of there, though, if he lives that way. Yeah. If he lives that way in there, somebody's going to handle him. Um, and did that if he's convicted of that stuff for a chick and a boy, pretty much, then things yeah. could not go very good for him. Um, Hopefully they don't. <laughs> I will say, I'm not a violent person. I'm not a mean person by any means. Um, anybody that knows me probably knows I'm probably one of the... the, the and I hate to say this, uh, you can just, probably one of the sweetest people you, you know. You can see it when you meet you. You um, can see it when we sat and talked before this. I could tell that immediately. So I do not object um, to that at all. They, um, they, People know me, and I've had some of the, probably the most horrible things go through my mind. Um, violent things go through my mind that I kind of pray that will happen to them. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's That's you, you took my baby. Right. That was your life. Yeah. My, my heart and soul. So when, um, when does this other guy come home? Um, the other guy, um, he's been arrested since 2019. Um, my understanding, it'll be 10 years from that. So 29 Five more years or so. Yeah. Um, I've already started having nightmares that I'm going to run into him somewhere on the street, mm -hmm. which terrifies me. <laughs> um, I now have PTSD. I can be out and about. Somebody with face tattoos comes up, and I, and I don't see that person in front of me. I see the one that hurt my uh -huh. side. I saw the photo. Yeah, I um, and, and it's nothing against anybody personally. I'm not a judgmental person by any means. No, you're. I'm very open minded. You don't even have to say that. Don't yeah. apologize for shit. <laughs> um, but to see somebody that. I was in sheets here in Winchester one day. This guy came in, nothing whatsoever to do with anything with his case. Don't know this guy from, from anybody. He had face tattoos. And I was with a girlfriend, and I, I lost it. I broke down. She had never seen me have a reaction like that, and she freaked out because she didn't know what to do to help me. All I could do was run out of the store. You know, and this guy, all he said to me was, excuse me, I didn't mean to be in your way. And I just happened to look up, and all I could see was face tattoos, and I freaked out. Terror. Yeah. I was terrified. Um, and that, that's all I see. I'm at work, and there's people that will come in, and that's all I see. Um, I have told parents, go hug your kids. Hug your kids really tight. Um, I work in a retail store, and I'll see parents come in, and they're yelling at their kids over some of the smallest, dumbest stuff. And I, I so have to bite my tongue and go, just buy them the candy, just buy them the toy. One day you're going to wish you could. You don't know what you have in front of you. I would give anything for him to bug me over, you know, buying something stupid. I would love to have to go buy him something stupid just because I would give anything in the world to have that. I go into stores and I look at stuff and I'm thinking I should be able to buy that for him. And, you know, holidays come up. I should be able, I should be buying this for him for a gift. I should he would love this. Why can't I get this for him? You know, just out of nowhere, I'd love to just get this and surprise him with it, just to see a smile on his face. And I can't do that because he's not here. 
all at the hands of two people that, in my mind, knew what they were doing at the time. And regardless, it was on drugs for sure. So, yeah, man, it's... uh... I also feel like some people are predetermined to be what they are, right? Like this guy Absolutely. had to be brought up in a certain way to make him violent like that. Yeah, I have no idea of all their backgrounds. I really don't. Um, I I do want to tell you, though, um, the day the second guy, the one that got charged for the 28 years, when we went to court for him, there was a man in the back of the courtroom and... Of course, it's two sides, and he had come in and he sat over on the left hand side of the courtroom, and we were sitting over on the right side where we needed to be, and we noticed that the during partway through he had moved over to our side, and um, my court advocate, you know, kind of looked at me and said, well, "I'll tell you who this is in a minute." I guess she knew who it was. This was an uncle to this man. And he stopped us when we took a break, and he apologized to me. He said, I am here for support for you all. He said, I would love nothing more than to have five minutes alone in a room with my nephew for him doing this. And that spoke such volumes to me. I didn't even know how to take it. I I did not know how to take that one of his family members was there to see what happened and they were on our side it's confusing for the it's confusing but not confusing i understand um he had spoke to us and was telling us some things too but um for him to be there in the courtroom to be on our side was just like flabbergasted. Well, his moral compass was obviously different from his nephew's. <laughs> obviously. Um, I, I want to say he was um, like military background, something like that. Um, he seemed like a very nice guy. Um, and like I say, for him to come up and say that, that he was there to be on our side of it. Um, and what he wouldn't give for five minutes in a room with him mm-hmm. was was amazing. So, so this has been a terrible experience, man. I truly four feel years, for you. just over four years that it feels like yesterday, all the time. Right, like every day you're waking to a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I come home at night and I look up in his room and want to see his light on. I pray that his light's on. That it's, I've been in in a bad dream that I can wake up from. Oh, Jesus, I feel like that. it's an April Fool's joke. I just want to hear a knock on the door. Hey, Mom, I'm home. All I want every single day. What do you do to deal with it daily? Like, are you keeping busy? (laughs) Are you got any social I work. Um, I have a lot of people that check in on me. Um, I I work a lot. (laughs) I I work whenever I can. um, And, you know, things like that. So... Do you feel like you're healing? Do you feel like there's a a healing process through this grieving that you're doing? Some days are better than others. Some days definitely are better than others. Um, Different times of the year hit me harder. Um, A lot of people, when they lose somebody, they have um, their birthdays. They have their death days. They have, you know, things like that. I feel like because I know basically when all this happened, when he was actually taken as to when they found him um, on his death certificate, they actually have December 2nd because that's when they found him. I feel like I have two death dates the day that it actually happened because we know that and what they call his official date. So from September to the end of the year is just horrible for me. And the closer it gets to December, the worse it gets. Um, I see it myself. So I know everybody around me sees it. Fortunately, I work with some really great people. um, And they understand. You know, to to a degree, they understand. um, A lot of them knew Trey for years. Um, I have people come up to me all the time. Hey, I knew your son. Hey, I knew this. You know, his smile was the best. Hey, he was a great person. You know, he was this, he was that. 
Um, that makes you feel good, though, right? It does. Um, a lot of people are afraid to talk to me about him. I don't want them to be afraid to talk to me. Anybody that knows me knows he is my pride and joy. I will talk about him at any given point. He So to come and remind you is helpful. Yeah. Tell me stories that he did. Tell me, um, you know, goofy stuff. Tell me the silly stories. Um, I had people coming to me telling me all kinds of stuff right after it happened. And there were some serious, very proud mom moments that come out of that. There were things that he would do that I had no idea he did. Um, and I remember one, um, he stood up for a friend of his in the middle of the daily grind. And I could not be a prouder mom than when he told me this. Oh, one of these. <laughs> um, he actually stood up for him so much and did not hesitate did not hesitate for a second to stand up for his buddy. Um, I have people come to me and say he's the first person I'd call. If I was upset about something, he's the first person I'd call. Or I'd make a post and he's the first person that responded to my post. Hey, what's up? What do you need? You know, you, you want to go meet somewhere? Or hey, I'm on my way over. You know, what's going on? He was always there for all his buddies. He um he never met somebody that he didn't consider a friend or a family. And as a mom, you want to raise somebody that cares about everybody else. And I definitely was lucky enough to know that's exactly who I raised. He um in school he would be the first one to welcome in somebody new. He wanted to be their friend first. He wanted to make them feel welcome. You know, didn't want them to be alone. Um, another another friend came to me and said, you know, he was the first first guy that I met in town. You know, I moved here. I just lost my mom, my sister. I was all alone. He just happened to be the first guy I met here in town. We became really good friends. And they still come and see me and check on me and still have a hard time because they lost, you know, somebody that was like a brother to them. Um his very best friend from middle school still has a really hard time with it because, you know, that was that was his brother. You know, they always said it's my brother from another mother and you saw one, you always saw the other. Um, and this guy's um uh, brother and sister, Trey was their big brother too. He was always there. If they needed something, if they were doing something they shouldn't have been, he would all right, come on now, you know better. You know, he would try to help keep them in line, too, and they missed that. These, these kids lost a lot. I lost my heart and soul. They lost their best friend and a, a brother at the hands of two people that didn't even know Trey. Did not know him. Not one bit. If they would have taken the time to get to know him, I'm not saying it would be different because of the meal on drugs, but it could have been. Yeah, I, don't know if it, I don't know if you can blame drugs as much as it's who they were. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, second thought, man, drugs change me from one person to another as well. They do. They do. But we also found out during trial that after they did this, they made two trips to Walmart which is all the way across town, they made two trips. So they were conscious enough to know that they needed to clean up, conscious enough to know that they did not have what they needed to do, and went back a second time to go get more cleaning supplies. Um, we found out last minute that the one guy wanted to burn the apartment down and the other guy convinced him, no, let's just hide his body instead. So with things like that, I will never be convinced that they didn't know what they were doing. That was such a chaotic moment. Whatever the hell they were doing was chaos. They were methed out. They were not in their right brains. They had no idea what they were doing. 
So that was a very chaotic whatever, however long that took of indecisiveness yeah. and, and thankfully a few mistakes that ended up getting him caught, right? Yeah. Um, I won't say that he got a conscience, but I guess maybe him trying to get less time um, or get off on some mm -hmm. of it led him to share the evidence where they hit him. Um, yeah, uh, if he was, if he would have still got to 28 years, he would have never shared that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I also feel like whoever was in the cell the first time that shared the beginning of the story probably benefited too. That's how the system works. Um, from my understanding, this guy had nothing to lose. Um, I don't even want to give a lot of his background, but he was there being transferred somewhere else. So he literally had nothing to lose. He was not in it for anything. Nothing to gain, you mean? Yeah, he had okay, nothing gotcha. to gain. Absolutely nothing to okay. gain. He was getting he was transferred a, somewhere he was else. A decent person with with felt like this dude was talking about yeah. something where somebody else was wrong, mm -hmm. and he helped you. Yeah, without really knowing he was going to help you. Yeah. Um, ironically enough, he was in a gang himself, and was getting transferred for charges and things. But he was there and felt like that's what he needed to do mm -hmm. at the time. He had nothing to gain from it. Um, the charges he was in for, he wasn't going to get anything less for it. So he just felt like that was what he needed to do. I'm glad he did. And I have no clue what his name was. I want to thank him for that. Um, the plea deals that they got. Um uh, they when they offered him the 28 years um they put that on the table um they brought me in on that friday and told me he had until five o'clock to accept or not accept the deal we were starting trial on monday morning so we were gearing up to go to trial which takes a lot of mental prep not knowing everything i'm going to hear they would feed me pieces when we would go into court and things for stuff. Um, well, you're probably going to hear some of this today. We want to be prepared for it. So they would bring me in a few days or so before court, um, whatever court date we were doing, and give me a little bit to try to process. And so we were we were building up for things. Um, gearing up mentally to go into court to hear who knows what. Um, and things like that. And at about 5.30 or so, that Friday evening before court, we got a phone call saying he accepted the deal that we weren't going to trial. Did you feel like a, something had been checked off or completed at that point? No, it was straight disappointment. I was so ready. I wanted, I wanted justice for my kid. I wanted Trey to have justice. And it felt like it was ripped away. 28 years wasn't enough. No. What do you think would have been enough? Personally, I don't know if there would have been anything that would have been enough. Um, the one thing that really got me, though, in the middle of this, the Commonwealth asked me if I was happy with this, with this 28 years. My response to him was... If it was a family member of yours, would you be happy with that? He kind of took a minute and kind of stuttered about for a second and was like, well, I know loopholes. And I just looked at him like, so you're telling me you know loopholes that's good for your family, but not loopholes that you can go through for my son? Like... Hmm. My son wouldn't be as important as a member of his family. And that brought straight anger and rage. Like, you can do it for you, but you can't do it for for my kid, for my baby. You know, that's, he's the most important thing in my life, and you can't figure out a way, you couldn't not do what I ask you, to, or do what I ask you not to do, and give them a plea deal and go from there. So, you know, that's kind of <laughs> very deflating, mm -hmm. very enraging. You know, it's 
I wanted that justice for him. Like you're classified into a section that says you're not worthy. Yeah. Of your full investigation, of your, yeah, of your, all of your talents and yeah. whatever it is you need to put forward to get um, me justice, you don't want to do it, but for you, you would. Yeah. And I, I, I do want to give so much appreciation to um, the lead investigator for the case. She went over and beyond. She, I found out she, um, I know you've probably watched CSI and things like that, how they have the boards up with the strings that attach that this one's associated here and the strings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, they said she literally had that in her office. She put in hundreds and hundreds of hours, um, contacts you across this out, do this and connect the dots here. And she made a file and she had to get a picture of Trey and she wanted to keep his face right in front of him or right in front of her. So she had a picture of who she was doing this for. He, it wasn't just another case number to her. It was a child essentially that she, she was doing this for. Um, I think she had kids around that age or so too. So it really kind of hit her as a mom too. Um, but she put so much time and effort in, um, went over and above anything she needed to do. She wanted to make sure that these guys got what they were supposed to get. So I, I can't say that the investigation didn't go well. Um, she did so much. Like I said, my, my court advocate, Kellyanne, she was amazing, still stays in touch with me. Um, it, it just feels like, like when it got to the Commonwealth, it felt like they kind of dropped the ball on me. You know, that, during COVID, they wanted another case off the off the dockets. Mm -hmm. Let's just get this through. Let's let's do whatever we can just to kind of push this through and, and get it get it out out of the system. That's where it feels like, you know, that it's they didn't want to take the time to do what they needed. It feels to me, you know, my family. It feels like that. Like we were just another number to them. Um. I have talked to the Commonwealth, um, not the Commonwealth, the Attorney General, um, Jason Meyer, Meyers, um, Meyers. Um, he is amazing. Um, I've been down to see a, round, a victim's roundtable twice, and I got to speak to him. Um, he is just, he's a very down-to-earth guy. You can tell he's a family man that um, he actually cares about things like this. Um, that's what the Victims Roundtable was about. Um, gaps in the system, things that failed in the system, um, things like that that need to be fixed. That's what he wanted to do by doing the Roundtable. Um, and it's there's some things in process. Um, as I mentioned before about being guilty by association, you're there, you're guilty. Um, I brought it up to him that that's how I was raised. That's what I knew. And I think that if you were there and you don't make an attempt to try to help somebody, make a phone call, send a text, um, just make it and let 911 hear what's going on in the background, um, cause some kind of distraction, try to help somebody, then you should be charged with it. And I'm, I would love to have Tristan's name attached to that if we can get that changed. Um, I think the attorney general is going to try to work on that, which would be beyond overwhelming and wonderful because Trey always wanted to help people. Um, if we could have his name attached to it, even if it helped, you know, one person, two people, that would make him so proud. Tristan and Trey, same person? Yes. Okay. His nickname's Trey. Gotcha. His, his given name was Tristan. I was confused for about a half I'm a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just a half a second. I'm then sorry. It, then it made sense because I thought for a second you was talking about one of the other guys. Oh, no. I was like, that doesn't make no, no, sense. No. It just took me a second. Um, but yeah, that would be awesome. I would to, love to, to have to that. have uh, a tragedy like that actually change something yeah. for the better. Yeah. Um, I, I don't ever want him... To be forgotten mm -hmm. by any means. Um, 
like I say, the more people that talk to me about him, the more I love it. Um, it lets me know that everybody else don't forget him as well. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. But to have somebody come up and talk to me, tell me they remember him, <laughs> that's uh, the best gift anybody can give me. <laughs> oh, his friends come over and try to give me big hugs. And uh, there's a couple of them that'll give me a hug that's pretty close to getting a hug from Trey. And sometimes it's really nice to get that surprise hug. But um, <laughs> like I said, the best best thing ever is to uh, talk about him. Let me know you didn't forget him either. He's uh, definitely one to not be forgotten. <laughs> So, <laughs> ah, glad you came. <laughs> I can't imagine. I've had it all. I don't want to just just dismiss anybody that loses their child because anybody that loses their child it's not supposed to happen that way we are supposed to outlive our kids by any means um i've got some really close friends that have lost their kids and my heart goes out to them because i know the road that they're going down just knowing it, it could be a medical it could be car accidents it could be accidental no matter what it's you're still in the same same area that I am, that you've lost your child. And it should not happen that way. Losing him in this manner is a whole other ball field. It was... It, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, but it's, it's unfair, and it's not right, and you feel like yeah. you were wrong. Yeah. And it um, makes you wonder, like, why? That's what did he deserve? That's definitely a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, it, it's like I say, I'm thinking of a couple couple friends of mine that have lost their kids, and my heart truly goes out to them. I try to be there for them to help support them, knowing steps of the grief process that I've been through, knowing that they're going to come up with these steps. Um. One girlfriend, I actually um, asked her, I said, have you cried yet? And she said, yeah, I cry every day. I said, no. Have you seriously cried? Have you sat and just screamed and cried and yelled and cussed and literally cried? She kind of looked at me and was like, no. And it wasn't two weeks later until she called me on the phone. Hysterical. She was at that point. And all I could do was go meet her and sit with her and just let her get it out. So I try to be there for, you know, my friends and stuff like that that's going through this that shouldn't have to go through it. Um, sometimes that kind of helps a little bit, you know, and then I'm kind of helping yeah. somebody else yeah. go through that process. Um, I never wanted to be in that position by any means. But knowing that I can at least be there to go, hey, this is where you're going to go. You know, and being there for them, it does help a little bit. Um, <laughs> I know our pets and stuff are family to us. I've got a dog at home. She's literally my fur baby, by all means. Um, one of the worst things that somebody could say is, oh, I lost my dog. I know how you feel. Hmm. I know yeah, people no. mean well with that. Right. I know how close we are with our pets. By all means, I am. But losing a piece of your heart and soul, it's a whole different plane. Um, I've lost my mom and dad. and I've lost my grandmother. I was incredibly close to um, an uncle very unexpectedly. Those have all been very, very traumatic to me. 
but when you lose your child, no matter what, there's nothing that can compare to that. Yeah. I think people go through and have their dogs and cats, pets, whatever, and they call them fur babies. And and they try to relate it the same way, but it's not a human. No. Um, You know, they'll, and I know people mean well with that. And it's, you know, my, my grandmother I was so close to that was, you know, 95, just passed away. I understand. Mm-mm. My grandmother that I was incredibly cr- close to, people called her my mom, was almost 92 when she passed. And it's still a whole nother plane. Of course, she lived her life. Yeah. She lived 72 more years yeah. and traded it. Um, I'll never get to be a grandma. He'll never get to be a dad, which he was amazing with kids. Kids just clung to him. Um, you know, he'd sit and have an adult conversation while sitting playing Hot Wheels with a kid on the floor. You know, he just, he was so good with kids. Um, and I just, I looked forward to the day when he would be a dad because I knew how good of a dad he'd be. You could just see it. Um, he wanted to be a mechanic. He'll never get to do that. He wanted to be an organ donor. He'll never get to do that. He wanted to give blood. I used to give blood all the time. He wanted to give blood. You know, he never got a chance to do that. He'll never get to get married. He'll never get to do all that stuff. And it hurts. It hurts every day. You think about it, and it it's like a knife in your heart every day. The whole purpose of having children is to see them do those things, right? Yeah, (laughs) you raise them and you look forward to stuff like that. Um, And you got to sit and exist without it. Yeah. Um, Me being me, I was that mom that um, looked forward to him turning 21, going out with his buddies and getting that phone call. Mom, I need a ride home. I'm too drunk to drive. Hey, we need a ride home. I look forward to that. I know that sounds probably crazy, no, but um, I look forward to that, and that'll never happen. His 21st birthday came and went, and I wanted that phone call more than anything, and it just would never happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> he turned 20, and he was gone. He would be 25 this year. He would be turning 25 at the end of September this year. Hopefully he'd be set on a good job and who knows, maybe he would have found a girlfriend that, you know, maybe she'd be the one. Maybe she wouldn't, but you know, he's didn't have that chance. <laughs> Things that your mind goes off and wonders all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you think about stuff like that. I hope this helps, man. I hope you being able to sit down and talk about it helps. Yeah. Every chance I get to talk about him, it's always, always a good thing. I, I love talking about him. Um, <laughs> like I say, it's just the little things that I see, you know, Sometimes it puts a smile on my face. Sometimes it does upset me, but, you know, there's there's signs he sends me all the time. Um, and I love to see that. Um, you know, just like say a song, one day it might put a smile on my face, the next day it might put me to tears, but I know I'm thinking about him. You know, it's it's definitely a good thing when I get to talk about him. It helps keep him alive, helps keep him aware. Um, and I greatly appreciate you taking time to talk to me about him. Um, wanting to know. It, it's it's a really good thing with that. Um, I've got people who say, I don't want to upset you by talking about him. No, please talk to me. Talk to me about him. Bring him right. up. Talk. Um, like I say, it's it's it is, I guess, kind of healing to be able to talk about him. Um the more awareness of the craziness in the system 
that that can hopefully help push change and uh, make it so maybe somebody else don't have to go through it or not as bad, not as hard to go through it. Um, Just sitting here is hard for me. Yeah, it is. There's, uh, I didn't want to get into details because that would, um, some of the things that they did to him was just, yeah, you don't, that's not, that was crazy. That's what you don't need to remember. Yeah. Um, a lot of that makes your mom wonder more. Yeah, of course. Um, and like I say, it's, it's hard enough wondering, you know, what would he be doing now? Where would he be? What, um, <laughs> you know, where would his life be headed? What good, <coughs> good path yeah. would he be going down? Right. You know, um, so looking back at like, I mean, trying to just try to think of like what to take from this for everyone else if you had a message to everyone out there huh. um <laughs> maybe be that protective parent um i was always the one that where you're going who you're with where you're going to be back how long you're going to be where you're all doing and he was always like mom you got to know yeah i do got to know everything i want to know where you are i want to know you're safe no matter what, you're my baby. That's that's where you're gonna be. Um, hug your hug your kids. Tell me you love them every day. Tomorrow is not promised for anybody. I never thought it would be that way for for Trey. Never thought it would be that way for us. And tomorrow was not promised. Never thought it. Just just definitely hug your kids. Tell them how much you love them. Buying the dumb little toy that they want, you know, spend that five bucks on them and make them happy of that moment. Because one day you're going to wish you could. And you're not going to be able to. You never know. Be grateful for what's in front of you. Absolutely. So do you want to drop a link or anything like to your Facebook or anything else you want to say? Like, do you feel like you've um, gotten out everything you want to talk about? I, I think probably for the... Pretty much, um, I think we touched touched on pretty much everything. I wanted to make sure I gave this shit out. So I wanted to make sure, um, you know, I, I bring up all of Trey's good qualities and how how much he was cared about. Um, I think anybody watching, yeah, is uh, gonna see how it affects you yeah <laughs> on a daily basis yeah it's because this is tough for me and uh i can i like the fact that you're happy about him i'm so happy and so proud of my boy it's it's he's definitely one to be proud of he's 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 a big-hearted person that should still be here he yeah. should still be here yeah, he should. Yeah. He should. Yeah. He was one that wanted to make a difference. And knowing him, he would definitely make a difference. He would make sure that he did somehow along the line. So. Yeah, it makes you wonder how the hell the world goes around the way it does with some of the people that do. Hell, I'm even one included. I did horrible things when I was a kid. I don't know how I lived through some of the car crashes and crazy things I did. And. Yeah. And there's so many good, innocent people that aren't here today that yeah. should be. Yeah. It just makes you, like, I don't know. <laughs> people think they know what's going on in the world. We don't know shit. We're peons. We're ants in a yeah. friggin' ant farm, man. We really are. Like I say, Warren County is not a place that you think something like this could happen. You read about it in big cities. You read about it, you know, in... in not pointing places out. You read about it in D.C., you read about it in Detroit, you read about sure. it in California, you read sure. about it in all these different places. You don't think little Front Royal Warren County, you're going to have something like mm -hmm. this. And we all think it's not going to happen to us. Yeah. Like, we just can't. Absolutely. Uh, I think the body, the natural body, we're, we're naturally built to look for the negative because of the danger. So we look for those negative things, but thinking these negative things will happen to us is something we avoid. And we're never prepared. No. Like I say, that day, those, the two sheriffs knocked on my door. 
thought never went through my mind. Not once did it go through my mind. That's just not something I thought they would ever say to me. Right. And I called my boyfriend. He was at work maybe two miles away. It felt like it took him hours to get home. And he seems like he's just very much affected as well. Yeah. He feels like he's lost two sons. Yeah, very um, much affected as well. He, he lost one for medical reasons. And he was Trey's stepdad, but he was dad to him. And he feels like he lost a second son. And it, it affects him um, on a daily basis, too. He, um, he, he thought I had a handle on it some days. He um, hates when I get upset when I'm having a day that something's hitting me really bad. He didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, guys are natural fixers. They, they want to fix it right then and there. They want to make it all better and just, you know, go from Move there. On, that's, man. that's how men are wired. Yeah. Men are wired to, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it all better. And frustrating when we can't. Yeah. It, it's nothing you can do to fix it. It's, it's, I have to go through it. He has to go through it and it's nothing you can fix. There, there's, it's not something you move on from. Right. I have come to the realization I'm going to carry this for life. Some days are better than others. But when there's hard days, they're hard. There, There's days that, yeah, I don't want to get out of bed. People say, well, you know, uh, you're so strong. You're doing this. You're doing that. I'm like, I'm not given a choice. My bills are still coming in no matter what. I don't have a choice. I have to get up and be here. Uh, no matter how much I don't want to be, I have I to be. I think that's beneficial too, though, because if yeah. you were able just to lay in the bed and, and you didn't have things yeah. to get out and do, then you're just going to melt and rot and, yeah. and, and die alongside him. Um, it probably would eat me up even more. Yeah. Um, you have to keep your mind occupied, yeah. especially through traumatic and, and experiences like this. At least that's my experience. Mm -hmm. Anything that I've gone through like that, yeah. uh, the death of my mother's children, prison, both of those things was actually at the same time. And it's hard. It's terrifying and it's hard. You're in a situation where everybody around me was someone that could possibly stab me in the back at any second. So uh, you're around people that support you. Use yeah. that to your advantage, man. You, you, yeah. you keep supporting each other and. And keep spreading his word, you know. Keep keep talking about him like he's the person that he was. Yeah. Big hearted, so kind, being there for everybody. You can go down front royal and just, you know, pick somebody out and talk to him. Most likely, they're going to know him or know of him. You know, they've they've heard of him. They've or know him, and he would stop in the daily grind. He would stop in the. Um, CNC ice cream down on Main Street. Um, Maddox Funeral Home. We know people in there. We grew up knowing them. Um, I mean, just anywhere in town. I, I don't even know all the places he would go in, but there's so many places you could just go in and say, "Hey, do you know Justin Brinkley?" And most likely they're gonna say, "Yeah," and you know, and I will almost lay money on it that they're gonna say something about his smile. Something about his big heart. Something about him wanting to help. That's just what everybody did. My yeah. aunt that I mentioned come down, the, what, two and a half years or so through court, every time we would come down, we would run into somebody else that was like, oh, I knew Tristan, I knew Tristan. Oh, we were sitting in the courthouse one day and I had somebody that kept looking at me really strange and we had mask made that has his face on it that we wore to court and... I had this one, and he kept looking at me, and he finally got up and was like, um, you know, I, I was looking at your mask, you know, who is that? And I was like, it's my son. And he said, well, you know, what's his name? And I told him, and I knew him. I knew him. And whoever they were with was, um, they kept giving him a funny look, and he was like, you know, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. Yeah, I knew him. He was, man, he was awesome. You know, he had a big heart, and he, he was always smiling, you know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through this. And we were across the, the waiting room in court, and they kept saying, well, who is that? And he was like, I'll tell you in a minute. 
I could tell he didn't want to upset me by you mm-hmm. know telling him who who I was right well, they should at the have... time, and they were being very respectful. But he was like, you know, I'm so sorry. And I, I saw him go over, and they're like, you know, they were kind of whispering to him, mm. and then they just kind of looked at me like, oh, you know, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I, 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 they didn't know what to say. I think a lot of people. You know, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Yeah. I don't. It's when people put two and two together of of this is what happened and oh you're his mom, they are at a loss for words because it's not supposed to happen. Especially here. It just doesn't happen here. So but it's it's always his big heart is this, is that um, a girl he went to school with. I actually worked with her at the job I met now, and she knew him through school. She knew me through work. She didn't put the two and two together. And one day, I think he came in or something, and she put the two and two together, and she said, "Now I see where he gets him being him, mm-hmm. and you are you because you all are so much alike." And she was so close to both of us. She's like, he would, you know, be walking in the halls and skip class with him because she was upset for something. And here he could try to talk to her and, and, you know, make her feel better, you know, or stop by her room and make goofy faces in the, in the classroom just to make her laugh in the middle of class. Um, you know, it, it really affected her at that point, too. When I told her I needed to call her when she got home from work that day, the day I found out. She said she just knew before I call, called her. And when I called her and said, hey, she knew the tone of my voice and she knew something was seriously wrong. And she said she just had that gut feeling that she knew. And she wanted me to, she wanted her feeling to be wrong. And when I told her, she didn't know what to say. She was so floored. And she was telling me all these things that he would do. He'd come out and make faces or, you know, get out of class and come walk the halls with her to to help her through whatever she was going through and so many stories he would do that. Um I remember there was one girl that um she was having a really hard time and it was almost midnight one night and he literally was headed out the door. And I, I said, I don't know where you think you're going. It is midnight. You are not going out this house. And he's like, Mom, I- I'm going. Regardless, I'm going. I'm like, you are not going out of this house at midnight. And he told me what was going on. And me being me, put my shoes on, got my car keys, and I went out with him. I wouldn't let him go alone. But he wanted to make sure his friend was okay. And that's where we went. We went to go check on her. Made sure she was okay. We stayed with her for a while and found out she was okay. And we came back home. He was okay. He just wanted to make sure she was okay. It was the only time he truly, truly was being defiant. It was like, no, I'm going. And I said, no, you're not going out of this house at midnight. You've lost your mind. Um, I think it was a school night or something, too. And I was like, not happening. He was like, Mom, I, I'm going out. I was like, no, you're not. So, but no, and she was okay. And then, you know, he was okay. And we came home. But that was the type of person he was all the time. Wanted to make sure his friends were okay, make sure his family's okay. Didn't matter at that point in that moment, you know, if it was good or not. In that moment, that was his most important thing. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, man, don't let the memory die. Keep your pillow. No. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I've got a an amazing blanket my aunt had made for me with a lot of these pictures. Awesome girlfriend had this made for me and. So how Absolutely. about tattoos? Any tattoos? I do. Um, I don't even know if I can get that up or not. This one is one. Um, I had a girlfriend do this one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it is pretty amazing how she set it up. Um, this was my birth flower and a green stem going up to give and Trey life with his birth flower. And then at the top, there's a butterfly with a ribbon for his call to death, which was murder. 
and I also have my mom, my dad, my grandmother in this. Hmm. Nice. Um, I've got a couple that I want to get for him. I can't just get one. Um, he has so many things going on. Um, and there's there's several that I want to get with him. Well, um, let me know. I'd like to do that for you. Oh, I would love that. Um, with him being a mechanic, there's one that I want to get. Um, basically, the speedometer. And I, I kind of want it like broken or cracked on 20. Um, and something with that, along that. I've thought about that because, like I say, him being involved with cars, got to have something with cars for yeah, me. Yeah, we can figure something like that out for sure. I would love that. Absolutely. I would absolutely love that. So, so yeah, man, before we wrap it up, anything else you want to drop real quick? Or you want me to put your name in the title so people can reach out to you? You just Sure. To... Yeah, okay. you can definitely do that. Um, I would love anybody that has any stories about him. Um, anybody that's curious, wants to know, you know, how things are going, how things are progressing with, you know, hopefully getting this law changed and fixed and so that maybe okay. he, he can still help somebody. And, and this Facebook, right, as your main social media site? Yes. Facebook. It's under your name. It is under my I'll name. Put your name in the title. Yep. Um, I've got a picture of him and I on it. So absolutely, it's you know right there. So, and whenever y'all see this woman, give her a hug. <laughs> like she wants hugs, man. Yeah. Talk talk about my boy. Bring him up. I love it. Absolutely. It does does put a smile on my face and definitely helps a little. Well, I appreciate you reaching time. out, man. I hope that uh, I hope that I can get a message from you, like I do from other people, and telling me how you feel better. Yeah, being able to talk about it, get it out there, let the world know. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's, it's, hopefully, it's a weight off your chest. Absolutely. Um, I've got a ton of people that are anxious to to hear it and help spread and and share it and go from there. Yes. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so man, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. You know. Drop a comment, you know, hit the like button, share video. Um, amazing story, man. It's I know it's hard to hard to talk about these things. So I give you full props for the courage thank it takes you. to come in. Thank you, thank you for taking the time to talk to me and yeah, and hearing the story and and getting things out. So very welcome. It's important, yeah. man. Yeah. All right, sweet. <laughs> thank you very much, man. That was awesome. You did yeah, very well. Yeah, thank you. you hold it together as well as you do. Because yeah. I feel like that's the difficult part. Yeah, he